This is Illiterate Light. You're listening to Bothering the Band. Hey, this is Jake from Illiterate Light. I'm feeling bothered. This is Bothering the Band. Jake, Jeff, we're so happy to have you back. It's great to be back. It's been a year or two, a couple years. 2022, you were on the yeah. pond, uh, but we saw you play in Jacksonville. That's right. A, a year ago. It was lovely. It was. Oh, that was about a year ago, huh? Yeah. The, the Blue Jay, right? Mm-hmm. Blue Jay, great spot. Great Listening spot. room. Yeah, I was, love it down there. Our friend Kara books that spot. And, uh, yeah, that was a really fun night because we got to do two sets and just do some storytelling. You, like you, you guys saw a very non-traditional show. We were like doing <laughs> yep. so much storytelling and just like kind of being total goobs, which we're usually goobers on stage, but we kind of got to ham it up a little bit more that night. Oh, we know you're goobers, and we got some real goober questions for you. <laughs> uh, oh, great. <laughs> but that night, we actually, it's funny, we got recognized that night. Like, there was a couple that were like, you guys are bothering the band, aren't you? Oh, that's rad. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake, congratulations. You're a new dad. Thanks so much. It's the best. Now it's we can't. Cr- amazing. Now we can't. We definitely can't crash with you now. Um <laughs> But oh. sh- shout out to your family. But nothing but nice to the bother and the band people. Mm, sweet. <laughs> hey, I I'm gonna kick off and ask you guys a question. I was curious about how the um, in person um, bother and the band events. I think you guys did some stuff in New York like a few months ago over the summer. How's how's that been going? Great. Yeah, we measure we measure our success in fun and. And uh, it's booming in that nice. case. It's, it's, especially in New York. New York was fucking amazing. And we did at Mercury Lounge. You guys ever play there? Yeah, we played there a few years ago. Yeah, so we did it there. We had some comedians and some rapper and a rapper. It was like, it was great. It was nice. Fantastic. Thank you for asking. We did. Yeah. That- we did one in Nashville and you guys were on tour. We almost stayed with Jake's at Jen Jake's like guest house. <laughs> uh, um, but that one was fun too. It was at city winery. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Branching out from just being in the, on the screen. Yeah. I, I remember seeing, I was, for some reason I was looking at show listings at Mercury um, and I saw that and I was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. Oh man. Then it's working. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> then it's working. Um, all right, let's go for it. Are you guys decorating for Halloween or holidays in general? Not decorating the house, but we will. We're playing a Halloween festival called Boogeyman in in uh, Char- in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, in a week, and um, costumes are mandatory. So me and Jake have a uh, big meeting after this to nail down what we're going to do. Open to ideas if you guys have any. I'm all about combining things, you know, like you take two concepts and make it one. Um, yeah. Nice. That's my Jeff can be a nose and I'll be a finger. Perfect. There's a, re- there's a, I have a, um, there's a Tim and Eric skit that I really love that like is like a two minute skit. And I kind of just want to dress up as that, but like nobody would know it. It's just a random Tim and Eric skit where they have this amazing um, handshake that they do. So I would just be like kind of showing that video to everybody all night. So probably not going to go for that, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll find, we'll find something cool. What about you guys? One, if you did that and you had one person get it, it would be worth it. Totally. That's true. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Um, I'm, you know, going to trick or treat with my daughter and she is a Hershey kiss. So I was thinking about wearing a kiss t-shirt. Nice. (laughs) That's mine. I'm going to be a skeleton because that's the only onesie I have. Mm. And I will trick or treat with my niece and nephew who will not be anything skeleton related. But again, that's all I have. I love it. I'm wearing a cool costume right now, y'all. I know. You're mm-hmm. looking good, man. How's I that thing holding purpose. up? It's great, man. Also, hold on. Wait. I can do it better. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
doubling up on the peach. Love it. Yeah, dude. That's that's limited edition right there. We have not reprinted that. It's it's beyond journalistic integrity now. It's just we're fans and we're like we're we're just done with the pod after we get illiterate light back on. We're like, All right, anyway. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> we're glad okay. when we saw this opportunity come through. It's good to see you guys again. Hell yeah, man! When when you announced the new album, it was like the first thing we did. Um, and we work with uh, Brendan a lot, so it, it works out. Uh, okay, you're crashing at a friend's house. You clog the toilet. There is no plunger. What's the game plan? Mm. Um, how how close of friends are we? Is this uh, yeah? That's what matters. Am I at Jake's house, um, or am I sleeping with like a random dude on tour? Like I'm at his house and it's two a.m. <laughs> I was gonna say acquaintance, but let's go with your ladder thing. Yeah. I, I mean, if that if we're in that scenario, you know, it's it's an easy. I'm waking Jake up, and we're just driving to the next town. Just leave it, you know. D- deny, deny, deny. We were never there. Gaslight him. Never go back to that town. <laughs> and that's why you're not coming to South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I would. Uh, I would get a cup and I would just slowly drink the toilet water until it was not going to overflow. I'm drinking coffee right now. I don't need to hear that. (laughs) To avoid a confrontation, that's what you're going to do. Exactly. You know, I do that actually every time anyways. It's just, I guess I would just keep doing my normal thing. You just don't, Um, you don't like flushing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's recycling, you know, it's just trying to save the planet. (laughs) <laughs> one poo at a time i just love there that we're we're nine minutes in and we're already disgusting i'm eating shit <laughs> <laughs> we can get uh, more can... disgusting like yeah. you know we're just kicking off here i know and it's kind of early i'm eating shit i'm writing that down <laughs> we, that's going to be the pool quote of the episode and this oh, is a perfect right. follow-up right here uh what would your plate look like at a breakfast buffet as a child. Ooh. Same thing it looks like as an adult, which I experience on tour all the time. I I'm hitting the I'm hitting the the pancake machine at Holiday and Express, loaded with um with butter and high fructose corn syrup uh syrup. And uh a little whipped cream, if I can, if they're, if it's a nicer Holiday Inn Express, and they're gonna throw that whipped cream on there, that's gonna make the cut. Um, I'm at the point where like, I don't, I don't eat, um, like I don't really eat the eggs and sausage at a lot of these places anymore. They just, I know they're healthier, but they just don't taste good at all. So I'm just on the sugar train at this point, and. Uh, I've been riding that train for 30 some odd years and I feel great. I go with a stack of that really thin crumbly bacon that I'm not exactly sure if it's actually bacon or not, but it's, it was, it was probably cooked all at the same time somehow. And, uh, yeah, just a big old glob of that stuff. And then, um, I'm also on the sugar train, anything sweet except pancakes for whatever reason pancakes have never been a go for me oh well let's let's explore this is it <laughs> so you said sweet you're on the sugar train i love a good donut it's a, it's i think it's the consistency i love waffles waffles are great mm. but i think pancake is is too much like too much bread and sweetness what about french toast i love it love it okay it's lighter a little more fluffy. I, I don't know. I can do. I can do pancakes. like one. I can do like one pancake, or I can. If I've realized more recently that pancakes with like yogurt or something that's not just like pure maple sugar on top. I uh, think what I what we're discovering that. about illiterate light right now is that we're a bundle of paradox. You know, it's like mm-hmm. especially Jake's diet. Um, it really highlights that. I could do Cinnabon. You know on top of Cinnabon, but you put a pancake in front of me, I'm going to be like, yo, too sweet. 
confusing. What about the donuts with like the the fruity pebbles and like the Oreos and shit on it now that they're making? I think honestly, Jeff and I are both in the uh, do the basics well uh, camp of donuts. If it's if it's got too much gobbledygook up there, I'm I'm gonna just <laughs> scrape it off and say start over. Chef. I feel the same way about beer at this point like there was like 10 10 years ago um when sort of like 10 10 15 years ago like the brewery revolution was happening throughout our country and it was like take it was like going main street you know it's like obviously it's been happening longer than that but when it sort of was like especially in virginia I remember just like everywhere I'd go, I'd be like, all right, just hit me with like the local, like whatever the local brewery is, like give me a good like IPA from there or something. And I was like, that was kind of my scene. And like, I'm at the point now where like a lot of places we go, I'm just kind of like, I, I don't trust the local brewery. It's going to taste like somebody's feet. And like, it's just like, there's so much, (laughs) so many people trying to be, ambitious with recipes out there and we're kind of losing the plot of simplicity and uh so i'm i'm kind of in the same donuts and beer you know kind of are in the same camp for me um i'm looking for simple well done um well crafted um and and uh that's that's my spiel on beer and donuts well, most people don't know it, but illiterate light is actually just, it's just a light beer reference. <laughs> yes. Illiterate light, baby. And, and, and donuts that can't read. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Not... You're, you're welcome to, for that one. <laughs> uh, I'm with you on the, the beer, the beer, well, sugar train. Now we're on the beer train. It was too many hops. People would be like, do you taste the coriander and shit like that? You're like, no, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, man. At one point, we played a um, a beer fest that was exclusively sour beer, um, but but what we quickly found out is very very small amount of it was like the traditionally brewed sour beer, and it was mostly just fruit juice mixed with beer, and it was overwhelming. It was just a pretty disappointing uh, day. <laughs> As far as beer goes, for me. Anyone else feel it when he said it? When he started talking about it? Oh, yeah. Of course, absolutely. Geeks swelling up. Yeah. 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 Oof. Oof. Okay. Fellas. I love fruit juice. Let's just be clear about that. Fruit juice on its own. With well, a donut in it. I actually, I do what my dad uh, has done for years, which is he, he wakes up each day and he makes a mixed drink, and for him, what that means is he gets some really cheap orange juice from Safeway or wherever and pours that over ice and then mixes it with half water. And so that's, that's my dad's mixed drink. And I take that to heart because that's disgusting. Pure futures, fruit juice, too sweet. Yeah. You you mix it with some water. You guys speak for yourselves. I'll, I'll wave the pure fruit juice flag on this one. Uh, (laughs) I'll take it to the dome. I don't, I don't buy it personally, but like, I, I don't really buy juice, but like, Straight OJ, I love it. Um, I also love Spindrift, and I think that they've they've kind of cornered the market a little bit on like the juice um, infused sparkling water. Um, Spin, Spindrift is basically the mixed drink I'm describing. It's just it's yeah, just sparkling got in it. So, all right, that does change things in my opinion. <laughs> I, I like Spindrift. I I wrote for Spindrift. Um, okay. Brief, briefly, so if you ever see, it's the champagne of sparkling waters. That's me. I invented but you, that. That's you. Yeah, that little slogan. Okay. Um, I like the Arnold Palmer one, the half and half. You like that one? Oh, I haven't tried that one. Oh yeah, it's like a, it's tea and lemonade. Oh, it's Love classic. It. Yeah. Abby, Abby, do you have any connection to Spindrift or is this I just a Ryan thing? This is a Ryan thing. Are I, you in, are you, do you enjoy it? Have I you ever don't. heard that phrase before? I'll be honest. I'm not into uh, the the craze. Sparkling water craze. Is it the sparkling water or is it the... Things. This podcast is over. <laughs> okay. 
Well, it's it's for I'm all the interested. It's for all the craft beer people who stopped drinking. Now we're like, give us the bubble water. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. So I'll just stick with the beer, and Ryan can have all the bubbly things. And your Moscow mules. Oh, that's that's a good choice. Uh, I go. I I like a Moscow mule. I'm a fan. Uh, we're gonna actually jump ahead to an Abby question. Do you ever watch the show Archer? <laughs> I've never seen it. Doesn't Abby ask Abby questions, or is <laughs> <laughs> Abby didn't know there was an Abby question in here today? <laughs> I'm trying kidding. to guess what it is. Do you watch the show Archer? I have not watched the show Archer. Yeah, I've not. I haven't seen it. I've heard of it. I know. I know what it is. You're missing out. First of all, okay. Tell us all about it. What? (laughs) (laughs) Well, everybody knows what it is, right? Like they're the international spy agency, but they're not. And that's H. John Benjamin, and I love him. But I'm still trying to action. Trying to what? No, it's animated. Sorry. Mm Hmm. Nice. Worth 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 diving into is 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 this uh it's hilarious. It's very funny. Okay. It's very silly. They are also they're very good at the long running jokes too that carry on over the seasons. Nice. Um and it also has Jessica Walter and she's just fantastic. If you know who that is, she's the mom from Arrested Development. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. But I asked to be well, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just want to know what the question was. That was it. Oh, that was my sure. question. Do you watch Archer? Yeah, you love Archer. <laughs> their name is a new album. The name of their oh, name. Oh, Arches. I get it. Arches. Now. Oh, I now I get it. See, none yeah. of us were with you. I was also <laughs> a little confused by the question. But yes, I do love Archer. And <laughs> at least once a day over the past month, because I'm rewatching it, I relate to it while speaking nice. to Ryan. Oh, okay. so ryan has technically seen all of archer too <laughs> here's an idea here's an idea for you guys to uh you know go go execute um don't you love that startup like here, here's here's something for everybody to chew on it's called archers and so what you guys do is you take your favorite abby this is for you you take your favorite scenes from archer and and um, you mute you mute the audio, and you put your favorite moments from Arches, and you splice it together, and it's it's a viral TikTok campaign, and um, we go from there, and then and then and then we actually come out and and tour um, the the city that you live in, which I said we toured like two years ago, and we still haven't been out there unless you're in Florida now. I can't remember. You are in Florida oh, yeah. now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna have to erase the because it was a it was a cool hotel that you were you had access to, right? I still do. I still work st- for the hotel. All right, well then I won't erase that part of your contact in my phone. <laughs> um, I do. So we still we if you want to go to Jackson, Wyoming, we can still. That's right. Set that up. All right, cool. All right, well, lovely. I'm glad you're in Florida now. You're closer. It's so much nicer too. There's no snow here. It's lovely. Amazing. Glad I threw everyone off with that. <laughs> ever seen it? ever like you guys all overthought it <laughs> i guess i was just i thought there was going to be a a, a, no. a punchline or something but that was the i was i think i was with abby on that one when yeah. you said what's the question i was like yeah what's the no, question that was the question you ever seen this show because it's kind of close to the name of her <laughs> do you have you guys watched bob's burgers that's another one that i no. know of, but i have not watched what yeah. shows do you like they did a crossover was the point I just finished watching the Three Body Problem on Netflix, which is great. great. Yeah, both Jake and I definitely are sci-fi lovers. Um, I'm working through the second season of Sopranos right now. Um, huge fan of a show that came out a few years ago called Patriot. Um. Hi, Sarah. Oh, wait. Just Cue my out. wife. Hello. <laughs> she bring you snacks? Oh, oh my God. Who's bringing me a snack? What? Hold on. Is it pancakes? It's not pancakes. It is loaded. I'm on a podcast right now. Is it ice cream? It's uh, it's ice cream for breakfast. It's the year of ice cream for me. 
Um, you no, have an ice cream it's, train. It's a it's, it's apple butter oatmeal. Ooh. Oh, that sounds so good. Everyone, that's that is the friendly city foodie right there. She's Here, step in a, the frame, Sarah. She's a f- famous um, person. She's a famous <laughs> she's, food critic. She is very famous. You can't hear what everybody's saying, but they're giving you high praise. Oh. So I got my AirPods on. Yeah. <laughs> and we would all like some. Did you bring enough yeah. to share? Yeah. Yes, yeah. If you brought enough to share with everybody. <laughs> Ship oh some God, down to looks, Florida. I love those so bowls good. too. I know those are really neat bowls They're too. Cute, Thank cute you. bowls. Great bowls. Uh, shout out to our neighbor Cassie Newman who made these bowls. Uh, great ceramic artist. Um, is it gonna offend anybody if I'm if I'm like enjoying this amazing um, f- breakfast lunch? It would offend me if you didn't enjoy it after somebody worked so hard to make that bowl and then the oatmeal and the apple butter. And Lovely. bring it to you. Yep. Good. The ASMR feature that we're about to I was, introduce. I was going to say, how loud is your mouth sounds? I'm about to find out. <laughs> Just do yeah. it naturally. Don't. All right. don't... <laughs> gonna have to come back. Gonna have to come back to this. It was spo- uh, the spoon on the teeth was yeah. <laughs> There's some freak out there that like that. I know you're yeah. listening. Mm. Oh, oh gross! <laughs> All right, I'll, 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 I'll keep on the coffee train in the meantime. Here's I another. Was... Here's another um, uh, mug that my neighbor Cassie Newman made for me, and it says, "Oh, look, Jake has his too." All right, we'll kick it off. We're doing show and tell. We'll kick it off with mine. Mine says, don't piss me off uh, three times um, because that's a lyric from a song that's on our last EP, Slow Down Time. The song, uh, the song is called Killer Not a Lover. It says, don't piss me off three times. So shout out, Cassie. Thank you for this. She knows uh, I, I have some deep-seated anger problems that I'm always working through. <laughs> and then I have, I have a mug that says, always... Twice, always, <laughs> always, because both Jeff and I are very repetitive songwriters, apparently. That's how you do it. What I'm watching right now, before we were so rudely interrupted by the Friendly City Foodie, um, is a show called Culinary Class Wars on Netflix, which I'm not typically very interested in food shows. I, I like to eat food, but I don't have a lot of opinions about it. Um, And the reason that I like this one is because it's a Korean show um, and the sort of dynamic of the judging and the, the, just like the culture of, (laughs) of the people on the show is so different and very, very interesting to me. Um, Mainly just like the first episode, there's 80 people that are competing at the same time. And when they, the, 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 the challenge was make your best dish. That was, that was it. And these are people that have like worked their entire lives to be chefs in Korea. And then the judges would just walk up straight to their face when they like ring, rang a bell to say they were done, would take one bite, look at them, look at them in the face and say pass or fail. Like there was, there wasn't deliberation there. It was just like the most, uh, I don't know. I, I found that incredibly fascinating. So, what what's it on it's on netflix i can't wait to check and this out there, are they wait did you say they were all korean yeah it's it's okay. like a korean tv a korean show, show. Okay. um so i it 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 automatically comes on overdubbed into english but that sound i, I hated that immediately we switched it to it, it, it in korean and then reading the subtitles okay. and it's far more enjoyable that way wow can't yeah wait. check it out can't wait. <laughs> Culinary class war? Yeah, it's Yeah, I'm into this. It's a bit I of thought a, it was like poor people versus rich people. <laughs> it's kind like... of that's that's close to what it is. They they took uh 80 unknown chefs and 20 like celebrity chefs and yeah. pinned them against each other. Wow. Well, that for the name of a show, Poor People <laughs> versus Rich People. <laughs> it is a battle to the death. That's great. Yeah, that's That's fantastic. Good, uh, you know, everyone that's what everybody wants. But, 
also i will just just while we're on while we're talking about it the the like the the visuals in production of that show are amazing and that w- i would not have thought that i would say that about a like a food show but like the when they like make these like reveal they have these like reveal moments of like who's judging or like what the ingredient is is like unbelievably cool um so yeah big two thumbs up for me i'm about halfway through i've gone down a rabbit hole (laughs) good all right let's get to some more questions are they questions who knows uh is a banana peel considered litter no no it's considered an envelope for a banana what are you talking about <laughs> you throw it out, if you threw it out of your car oh, well you, uh, you throw i, it out, I, I, I am um i am particular about envelope where where it where it lands um i think i think that's i think that's the answer i think if you put a banana peel on the street in new york city uh or on the sidewalk in new york city i think you're littering and also a terrorist. I think you should be put in jail for 15 to 25 years. It's a minimum sentence. Um, but I think if, which I don't recommend anybody do. Um, but I think if, uh, if you're, if you're driving on the highway and you're in the middle of Nebraska and, and the, the, there's no shoulder and the grass is right there. Hey, it's, it's a a few days in the sun, that thing's going to be pretty beat down and it's going to actually help the earth and our soil. So, uh, so it's context dependent, but yeah, 25 year minimum for New York city banana (laughs) drop. As, as somewhat failed urban farmers, that's what we would call direct compost. You just throw it right in the garden and it, and it, it's giving its nutrients back immediately. Um, but mostly I'd say litter. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, you're both right. And you both get points. (laughs) This is a game show. Is there a point system? Yeah. How many points did Jake get for talking about poop eight minutes in? (laughs) He got a lot of points for that. I'm eating (laughs) shit was the exact quote. Uh, (laughs) Uh, Okay. So let's say you're, I'm going to have to spell these questions out now more. Um, you're working <laughs> on something with a wrench or a screwdriver. Do you still in your head say righty tighty, lefty loosey? Yes. Always. Nice. Yeah. And it still confuses me. <laughs> <laughs> Expl- okay, uh, elaborate. I, I don't know what, like, it's still th- I just follow the tension it is truly what it comes down to but but um yeah I still I still I still say it still still reminding yourself yeah uh, my daughter had an interesting thing I was trying to teach her that and I was like ready tidy lefty loose and she goes yes but if it's a screw it's going righty then back around and coming left see that's that's what confuses me i I have a very holistic perspective when it comes to the the nature of hardware and so yeah it's it's all sort of one um it's a real it's sort of like a mystical awareness when it comes to um screws and wrenches but um but anyways yeah so that's that's where the lines get blurred but i say it it helps I have a harder time with faucets than with screws. I feel like if a screw, with a screw, I know if I'm going in or out, there's a button usually. I'm usually on a, a you know, power drill kind of guy. But if it's like, do I turn the right knob or the left knob, right or left to make it hotter or cold? Like there's way too many options for me there. Showers are a kind of a nightmare scenario for me. I kind of avoid them. On tour, I feel like you guys probably are like, what's this shower deal? Oh, yeah, never. Never shower on tour. <laughs> it's dangerous. And only eat shit. Okay, is the is the Jennifer Aniston thing a gag? No, she's uh she's my aunt's sister's best friend's daughter. Yeah, it's to, it's totally made up. <laughs> Here's the thing a lot of people that you know 
sort of misunderstand about our little universe here. It's like, there's always a, there's always, there's always a kernel of truth. There's a kernel of truth to everything we do. We're, we're not really out to like, to, to punk anybody. Yes, we were in People Magazine. Yes, that photograph was real. We did not put the uh, logo on there and dress ourselves up like cowboys or anything like that. <laughs> um, was there a headline about how Jennifer Aniston sh- saved our band? No. Um, so, you know, there was, there was a little fun spliced in. Jeff and I were sitting in, a, sitting in an airport when that got posted, that, uh, the, that photo shoot got posted by people. Um, and we were reposting it and uh, the goal of Jeff and I sitting there was, we were making each other laugh, trying to think what was the most people magazine celebrity and what would they have to say about our band? And we came up with that Jennifer Aniston saved Illiterate Light. (laughs) Yeah, she definitely took time out of her schedule to help you guys out. When you're in your darkest days. She's the face of People Magazine. I've been seeing Jennifer Aniston on People Magazine my entire life. What an honor. That's a great, yeah. If that question you pose to each other, like who's the most People Magazine person, that's a good one. Yeah, you can you can keep it, and it has a right answer. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, uh, in celebrity gossip news, you also got to hang out with Conan O'Brien. Can you help him? Can you help us get him on the pod? Text. Mm, that's mm. that's 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 a tall order. We did get to hang out with him, and he was tall? he is a tall man, <laughs> a tall Irishman. He's hilarious, man. He was he was cracking jokes left and right. You know, I think that's just that's there's no turning it on or off. That's just who he is. Um, you know, I I think uh I think he's gonna I think he's gonna need a really you know form the form the band and hit the road for him to qualify. I would kind of disqualify him from the podcast. That's why I'd I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> I think if if I really thought he was a good candidate, I'd pick up the phone right now and make it happen. But, you know, my professional opinion, you know, this is bothering the band, not not by bothering the comedian. So, yeah, okay. you know, okay. <laughs> okay. but I do. I mean, it's it's an easy for me. Like if I wanted to make it happen, it would be like an easy phone call. Like I'd literally I'd call him. He'd be on here in an hour. So that's the sort of power that I'm holding right now. All right. So when he becomes a real musician, real band in your eyes, we'll make the call. Exactly. Then I'll make it happen. <laughs> It'll be no problem. NBD. Yep. I hope people know I'm joking. I don't have his contact. Uh, Abby, take out the joking part. We'll edit that part out. Okay. Uh, and just put in, we'll put in someone else's phone number. We'll put in Chris Corso's phone number. And hopefully people will call him. Ask him Lovely. for phone in. Uh, okay. You ever been shit on by a cool bird, like a hawk or an eagle or anything? <laughs> a boy can only dream. I think... All birds are cool. What, what <laughs> the, better, the better question is why didn't Cardinal you, make the list? What for you is a shitty bird? That's seagulls. more important. Seagulls. Seagulls? Why? Seagulls are what? shitty. You are yeah, like rats you, with wings. Why do you feel that? What makes you look so poorly on an entire <laughs> genre of bird? Genre of bird. Have, uh, and that's what they experience? are. They are a genre. Tell us more about your bird love. No, tell us. You tell us about your bird hatred. I'm going to tell you that in the gull family, none of them are actually called seagulls. Oh, Abby coming in hot with the facts. That's why, because they're misrepresent. They're they're, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but yeah, they're misrepresenting themselves. So that's why you don't like them because yeah. of publicity. I've never been shit on. I've never been shit on by a bird. Um, no. Very unlucky guy. Yeah. 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 It's, um, Sounds pretty lucky to me. Yeah. I'll, 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 I don't know. Maybe I come down to Florida. Maybe we, we gather some gulls and, and make this thing happen. Let's gather those gulls, dude. I'm more interested in parking lot gulls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Oh, like a Walmart. They're a little more DIY. Walmart gull. Actually, that's my solo project. 
So yeah, some of the some of the Gauls, like you know, on the coast, they're a little more bougie. They're like kind of living their best life. Like they've got access to both um, land and sea. You know, I, I like the I like I'm with you on that one, Jake. I like the Gauls that are like you know a little more, um, I don't know, a little more gritty, a little more down home. Yeah, a little more down to earth, country folk. I love a good when I when I get you know. Uh, uh, close and personal with a parking lot goal um and they do the thing where like they don't they can't really look at me with both eyes at the same time so they're kind of like looking at me with this eye and then they switch really fast to this eye and they kind of <laughs> go back and forth i see i love a goal but you know i guess some people just can only see them for you know what society has forced on you to think about them the color of their feathers um you'd have to you'd have to admit that there are some birds that are cooler than others correct i agree and you also it stands to reason that someone out there has been shit on by like an owl that's no. all i'm just trying to, why because owls like just shit those little pellet things okay i don't it they their gravity still exists they're still flying over Owls have solid poop. So it's like I had to. So we did this thing in elementary school um, where we dissected them. I think those were like uh, hairballs. Owl pellet. That's their. Isn't that their poop? I think oh. it was a, a regurgitation thing. Was it? This. Oh. Uh, this is my favorite episode ever. This is a pretty amazing uh, throwback, there, Abby, to elementary school, to science elementary school, dissecting. Like, Al feces, like here we go. Yeah, but now I've been told it's probably a hairball. Now I have to Google this. Let's ask ChatGPT. Google ChatGPT does do owls shit? Does an owl shit in the woods? <laughs> oh man! Wait till you see the next questions. Jeez. Is it more about a bird's oh. cloaca? It it is vomit. <laughs> it's vomit. Well, there you go. But yes, we did dissect that. So you're telling me Wikipedia says owls shit vomit? That's that's what it says? <laughs> Absolutely. Who are they letting edit these things these days? Literally like, anyone who wants to. Man. Oh, man. I got shit on by a raven. Is that a cool bird? That's very cool. Honestly, yeah. When you say it like that, that's definitely yeah. cool. I get you the question You gotta say it like Edgar Allan Poe, though. <laughs> oh man okay do you call them this where it's i wrote these before this conversation do you call them porta potties or porta johns mind blown um i use this i use these frequently as a touring musician playing festivals i'm a little fluid um, I think, uh, I think if I'm hitting the, the, the oversized handicapped one, which is like the gold standard, we have all that room. Um, I'm going port to john Ah, okay. I see where you're going. If I'm in like the row of like 60 and, and it's, it's like raining out and muddy and it's like, tight in there and there's no tp left and there's piss all over the seat that's a porta potty so that's the distinction for me <laughs> i get it it's brilliant <laughs> i think i'm a porta potty kind of guy and if you're in france it's the porta loo is that a french okay. thing or a english thing we know some french we know a french rock duo called uh the inspector clouseau and i could whatsapp them right now i could send a picture and just say what, and, and Google translate to French and just say, what's this called? Yeah. But, um, do that to Conan in French. I, I do like that. <laughs> we'd, we'd get a very funny answer. Okay. <laughs> when you get back from tour, what is one thing you have to do as soon as possible? Obviously not counting, including greeting your fa friends, family, stuff like that. It's all about food for me. Um, I'm going. Uh, there's, there's. I'm going to one of two spots within 24 hours. Um, 
Indian American Cafe, which is amazing food from Nepal, um, Nepalese food, and I'll get chicken sog, um, spice level three. The rating system is zero through four, which I really like. Um, so yeah, I go three. Or I'm going to the Little Grill, which is awesome breakfast diner, super cool restaurant in town where I will get pancakes. Um, Jake not looking fondly upon that. But yeah, that's that's uh, what I do when I get back. I have sex with my wife. I like Jake's answer better. Oh man! <laughs> I want the pancakes after the sex. <laughs> yeah, that that lines up with my priorities as well. Okay, I'm 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 ten years in. Me and Sarah are still sort of feeling out if we're actually gonna try it out. Jake's been telling me how amazing and fun it is just to actually do the thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm just I just want to. It's probably gonna be a few more years just letting things breathe until we start seeing what this whole sex thing is all about. I do I have heard about it though. It's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Recommend. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll back Jake on that. <laughs> I have one child, so that that means I can prove I've had sex once. So <laughs> Oh neat oh, bro. <laughs> Uh, do you find yourself to be passive aggressive? And I have an example here. It's okay. There are no Florida dates on your tour, your upcoming tour. The qu the question is: Is it okay to be passive aggressive? Do you, do you find, find yourself? Yeah. Um, I've got two answers to that. Um, I pr I prefer to be actively aggressive, uh, directly aggressive. Uh, when 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 I'm going to be aggressive, it's it's just let's let's cut the bullshit um and you will be very excited about an announcement that we are making next week which i will now uh shut my mouth in regards to your florida comments is it that you're gonna play at the vans warp tour 2025 in orlando florida at the camping world stadium childhood dream Whoa. that would be amazing that because they be announced amazing. it today are we on it? <laughs> I mean, not you, but they announced the Warp Tour. Oh, I thought you meant the the lineup. No. Um, I was really hoping that we had gotten booked and you knew before we did. That That'd be amazing. so sick. There is a band called Walmart Gulls on there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't. That wouldn't That's surprise it. me. <laughs> it really it's, a, it's a ska band, though. <laughs> totally. You, you know me so well. Oh, goodness. We're having fun now. I can't wait for that announcement. And a couple more questions. One, do you have any books on your nightstand? This is an important question. Yes. Final okay, answer. cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Don't give a shit what they are. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a stack of half-read books. I, it's really hard for me to finish books, but I love starting them. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I've wanted a nightstand for a long time. I don't have a, or my wife and I's bedroom is very small. We literally can't, there's, it, there's a bed and like two shelves. So we have a small house. So I don't have an actual stand. So I keep a bed underneath, I keep a book underneath my bed. And right now that book is a book called Owning Your Own Shadow by Robert Johnson. And he's a Jungian psychologists wrote it in the late eighties and it talks about understanding, uh, your unconscious. Yeah. I know, I know this book actually, Abby got me another book by the same fella. Was it he or she or we? No, the, those four are all pretty, pretty popular. It was another shadow book. It was yeah. A shadow in the title. That's a lot. A lot of this dude's work deals with yeah. that. I'm a big fan. Shadow self, yeah, um, good shit. Uh, I like that you went literal. You're like, I don't have an. You're like pining for a nightstand. You're like, one I, day. I, I told Sarah, I'm, I'm like, nightstand. it would be amazing to be able to put my book on a little stand next to me instead of underneath our dusty bed. And your pure juice. If anybody is able to like buy our new record 
so we can make a little cash and Jeff can buy a nightstand or a new house. The, st- the stand could be this big. The stand could be this big, just big enough for a book, but I can't build that until people buy our record. Uh, tell us all about the record. It's for sale. Why do we want to talk about that? <laughs> It's for sale. It's a really great album that's for sale. It's a concept album for uh, the show Archer, right? It's a pure, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's nine. It's nine songs. You're seeing the location of recording for for seven of the nine here in Harrisonburg, VA, the studio in my backyard that got built during the pandemic we recorded two songs in la and seven songs here we need to do a live show in your neck of the woods that's come on bothering a band well can you get you got any buddies around there that play music just do a big show i got got plenty yeah yeah we can do a show done done what are you guys doing tomorrow um i have to go to my nephew's soccer game but other than that uh, wide open you can shoot me an email. You shoot me an email. Yeah, we can work it out. I'm going to Taylor Swift on Sunday. How about that? Where's that going down, Ryan? In Florida. Miami. Okay. Um, I love that we're not. We moved on from the new album. Um, this... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, should our publicist would not like that. Maybe. Uh, uh... <laughs> Allow me to bring us back. <laughs> Uh, well, the three songs you dropped from the album are perfect. That's the best way I could say it. Uh, Jake, what kind of incense are you burning? Oh, this is... Um, I, I can't find a match, so I'm just holding it. But this is... <laughs> You're just smelling it? Hoye Ko. I don't ever Would light it. Would you like it. to use my lighter? Oh, please. That's sitting here for my incense. Here you go. See, we've already traded oatmeal digitally. Now we're yeah. trading lighters and fire. This is really revolutionary stuff. Well... Let's wrap up so you can go eat that oatmeal. Um, <laughs> we end every episode with a song from our guest. Which one of your songs would you like us to cap this episode off with? I think we, I think we cap it with uh, our song Norfolk Southern, the first single that we released off of Arches, now retitled Archers. People are gonna be like, I'm googling it. I can't find it. You can't find it. <laughs> I was gonna buy it. Now I'm out of. I'm out altogether. Uh, <laughs> Guess I'll go see Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'm just gonna she... send you a night table. You'll be. It'll be uh, okay. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Here's your night table. Yeah, let's pitch in and buy him one. Uh, he, he can't fit it, so he just has to, like leave it in the fucking middle of the. Okay, um, that song. Norfolk Southern is a boogie. I fucking love that song. I listened to it real loud at 5 a.m. this morning. Exactly what I wanted to hear. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, two coffees in already, too. Let's go. <laughs> okay, guys, if you can interview any musician live or dead in the vein of bothering the band, so really stupid questions, who would you interview and what would you ask them? I've always been outspoken about Neil Young being my my go-to. I've never actually thought about what I'd what I'd ask Neil. Neil's alive, obviously alive and well. Would you ask him something silly like um, Neil? Do you Neil banana peel? That question that would work pretty good. Do you think oh. it's literary? <laughs> What was the question? I just dropped banana littering? peel on him. Oh man, I'm throwing back to the banana peel question of do you think it's littering? Oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. That... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think, um, I think I just say, hey, Neil, how you doing? We let it ride from there. No, but that's not the question. The question is, you have to interview an artist in the in the format of bothering the band so using dumb questions i think how you i do never it. said these questions were dumb he, he did, did. <laughs> and, I, and i agree but i never said that <laughs> um, i think i think how you doing to neil, neil young is pretty dumb hey how you doing how you doing neil but i say it with a canadian accent you say like joey from friends 
Yeah, I, I was he Canadian? No, but he that's his line. How you doing? Yeah. How you doing? I like that. No. Yeah, what if I just hit on him? That'd be good. That's what I do. Uh, it's Neil Young and I'm just trying to flirt and like see how that goes. That's perfect. I'm into that. It's pretty good. But there wasn't enough flirting this morning. I won't hold that against you. It doesn't it doesn't mean we're not going to come back. But yeah. Jake, um, I'm going to go with Anthony Kiedis, and I feel like that would be a pretty normal conversation with him. Just, just based on his lyrics. But he's only speaking to you in the manner in which he sings, so you have to dissect it and figure out what the answer was. Yeah, yeah. I ask him a weird question. He responds normally with, you know, like interesting words. Um, and I think we would get along great. <laughs> My main agree. interactions with him have been watching the uh, Funky Monks documentary over and over again, which I absolutely love. Have you guys seen that documentary? No, have not. I think it's on YouTube okay. and it's, it's, um, the, the band in the process of recording, I guess, is it blood sugar, sex magic, Jeff? Is that? Yeah. And it's just, it's just wild. I just find the, the characters of the band just lovely. They really are very entertaining outside <laughs> of just yeah. their music as well yes yeah agreed it's, it's delightful i'm into this ryan we're gonna <laughs> add that to movie list we ryan and i went and saw them a couple of years ago yeah yeah i'm a huge i'm being totally honest i'm a i'm a big red hot chili peppers fan we're I'm, not, I'm not picking yeah. on them yeah we we love yeah, the chili I like peppers them. i like them. But, uh, they're like but, the adam yeah. sandler of bands but it was that yeah, first that's... tour when john frusciante came back and that yeah. was fun in that the rain awesome. too which legend was really cool they didn't play under the bridge. Isn't that weird? They, well, no, That's it weird. was on our set, but they cut it because uh, remember they yeah. like to post their set list. But that show got delayed by almost two hours right. because it was basically a hurricane and the parking lot was flooding yeah. and cars were floating away. <laughs> and then they were like, "By the way, you can come in now." Hmm. And so they cut songs, and that's one of the ones we lost, and that did make me sad. It's a weird that's one. All right, guys, I'm going to give you one more chance to shamelessly plug anything. What's next for Illiterate Light? New record in T minus 14, 14 days, days that you uh, you don't know anything about. It's the beautiful thing about 2024. You don't have to know anything about music to be able to go hear it and sample it. There's no cost of entry. All you have to do is get on the web, take a listen. See for yourself if you like it or not. Got the record coming. We got a full U.S. tour. Might be going to Europe a couple times next year. We've got... Hanging out with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, man. Well, by the time this comes out, the album will already be out. Everyone listening, go listen to Arches. I'm going to bet all the money I have that it's perfect. Uh, guys, it's without bullshit or hyperbole. We love you. We love your band. Please, we'll always have you back. We will always bother you in the real world to be like, hey, can we, can we, we're at your show. Can we say hey? Um, yeah, we love you guys. Fucking hey, keep making awesome rock music. We love you guys. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. The feeling is mutual. Round and around and around the clock. Round and around and around the clock.
Info.